Well, hello out there and welcome to our first installment of the Hawk Talk live video interactive series here with the Monmouth University Athletics Department as brought to you by the Monmouth Digital Network. I'm Eddie Acapinti. I'm happy to be your host for this introspective look at all of the Monmouth University athletics and the university community folks that we get to hear from. And the most important thing is we'll get to take questions from all of you watching on our live broadcast here this evening. We are starting our Hawk Talk series, of which we'll be doing two a week here on Tuesday night with, that's right, the head coach of the Monmouth University men's basketball team, King Rice. And not only Let's go. we begin Let's with go. King Rice, special guest. Hang on, I'm busting in, Eddie. Let me bust in. It's throwback day at the Rice's house. We throwing back. McDonald's All-American jersey, but then the real baller in the family, the real baller in the family. Julian Rice. Come on down, Julian. Come on down, Julian. Hello, everybody. We're at the Rice's house. We put up a picture in the back so we can feel like we're at the beach. So welcome, everybody, to our home. Say what's oh. up, man. What's up? All right. You going to slide out to the left a little bit? Yep. All right. How you Coach, doing, Eddie? Coach, I'm well. Julian, I'm well. It's good to see you, too. And before we do anything else, have to ask how you and the family are doing. Obviously, we're all working from home now, things being very different. How are you and your family doing, Coach? Well, Eddie, we're doing well um, because we're together. Um, this is trying times for everybody, but I'm, I'm trying to spin it in a positive way. Um, I get to have my son Alexander home from college. Uh, Julian's here. Summer's here. And we're very, very blessed. Um, her, her parents, Summer's parents are here. They usually come out in January and stay for games. And this year they've had to stay longer. So we're very fortunate that we have this time with, our, with my in-laws and Summer's parents. And we're so blessed that our son Alexander is home. I think you mentioned kind of the key thing is being together, uh, being healthy and, and everyone. Uh, we are indeed in this together. And, uh, you know, I know you and I are part of a very fortunate group that work at Monmouth University. We are working from home. We're working remotely. Our students are learning remotely. Uh, and I know our experience since we got back from the tournament in Atlantic City has been one that we've been kept up to date. We have been uh, informed every step of the way of what's going on. And I know that that's something that's very important to you and your program. Well, Eddie, I mean, just to start, you know, we were down at the tournament and all of us were feeling we should play. We shouldn't play. We were worried about it. We didn't have a lot of information. And right there, the leadership of mom has started showing through. Um, Dr. McNeil was in constant contact with us. And we're so fortunate that we have a leader like Dr. McNeil in the athletic department. She's been getting the, the head coaches together, keeping us abreast of everything that's going on, encouraging us to stay healthy. And when you have leadership like Dr. McNeil, you, you, I'm, I'm very lucky that I get to be the basketball coach. And then another person that I, I'm glad we're following is our president. Um, president Leahy, since he's been here, has been tremendous. The energy that he leads with, you can tell he's very, very bright. Things are thought out. He has a plan. Uh, then a monkey wrench got thrown into to the start of his deal this year, and he has big plans for us. But the leadership he is showing, he's been on the phone with me. He's been on the on calls with our team, and I'm fortunate that the people that I'm supposed to follow, President Leahy and Dr. McNeil, are two of the best in their field. So I think all the people at Mama should feel safe because we are we have great great leadership at the top. And that leadership is something that we all get to see on a day-to-day -day basis working there. Our students get to feel that going to Monmouth and having to move to the remote learning. And, Coach, uh, we could kind of lead off there. And, and, again, here on Hawk Talk, we'll be able to take our viewer questions. If you have a question for Coach Rice throughout our conversation, make sure that you submit it. Let us know where you are contributing from. Uh, and, Coach, I think the, the thing I'd like to know first, and I'm sure our viewers do as well, since – this whole thing happened and since the season ended abruptly and and everything has changed uh, how has things been for you and the program and talking to the players keeping them updated on everything as well i know you have a family to worry about and to look after but i also know that you have a program to keep a close eye on as well well 
Um, Eddie, what we tried to do is we've been once a week, we've been on Zoom calls with them. Um, the coaches have tried to stay in contact, just calling them, checking on them, um, not being overbearing, but just just checking to make sure mentally they still feel strong. Um, I'm, I'm feeling it from all levels, as happy as I am that, Zan that Alexander is home. Um, you know, it, this was the spring of his freshman year after he had his basketball season and he was ready to go back and do all these cool things this spring and now he's home. So I know that's trying for him. So I try to put that with what my kids are doing at their homes and they can't get in the gym. You can't go outside. So I'm trying to just stay in touch with them and, and talk to them about, talk to your parents about everything you might've wanted to talk to them about before. Show them your growth. Show them that you're not the little boy that left home before, but you've grown in this time that you've been away. And have great conversations with your parents. Because as a parent, we just want to know that you're growing, that you're safe, and we want to make sure that everything is okay with you. When you're 19 and 20, you want to show your parents, I got this now. I don't need any help. I got all the answers. Well, talk to them more and you can show them that. So we try to not worry about basketball much because we know that's what they're worried about and just try to make sure that they make sure their minds are straight and then the physical stuff will come back quickly. Coach, one of the things I've always been interested in whenever you and I get to talk is you and your staff always talk about that the whole experience of, of college, of the full student athlete experience. I want to kind of further what you just said. So now you take a lot of pride in graduating your student athletes and, and helping them become men as they progress through Monmouth and then leave. So at a time like this, it really puts the, the emphasis on that development, right, of the entire person, not just the basketball player. Well, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to play for Coach Smith at North Carolina. And I always said to everybody, he always looked out for us. He always gave you advice that was best for you. And now this week, everybody's watching the Michael Jordan story and they hear Coach Smith told him that. Well, Coach Smith also told Coach Reed the same thing. He was a coach that was there for you as a player. He had done it a long time by the time I had been there. So he had, been, he had seen everything. So he tried to teach us and pass along the things that he learned. And that's why a lot of guys at North Carolina, after being in that program, graduate and go on to do great things. Well, I'm, I've been trying to build that since day one. We have all the support in the, ward, in the world with the faculty that we have here, with the help that the athletic department gets with Tom Beaver, academic support, and all those people. We have the things to, to pass along to these kids. And when you're 19 or 20, their goal, my guy's goal is to play pro basketball. That's what they want the most. And they make sure the school part is right there with them most of the time for their families. Most of the time, that's why they do it. So as the coach, you have to continuously remind them it's way bigger than basketball. Your life is going to go a lot longer than these four years while you're here. Let's continue to grow. And I always tell the parents, my job is to send back the grown-up version of the young man that you gave me. And we take a lot of pride in that. And we have a team of people here to help us with that. And with the Monmouth community, we've been very, very fortunate to be, have a lot of success having guys graduate and go on to do a lot of good things. We've got questions that are starting to come in for the head men's basketball coach at Monmouth University, King Rice. And uh, before, and there's two in the queue right now, before we get to those questions, I do want to mention that this Hawk Talk series is indeed live. But if you happen to miss the show, you will be able to watch it archived on MammothHawks.com, and it will also be available here on Facebook as well in case you miss any of the content that Coach Rice and I talk about. And before we get to our first question, Coach, you mentioned it a little bit already, and I've got to, again, just kind of further the point one more. Um, you mentioned that documentary. We, it's the closest I think we've all come to sports in the last couple of weeks. When you're watching those conversations and you see how Michael Jordan interacted with Dean Smith, did you get brought back a little bit to, to a younger King Rice, who was a McDonald's All-American from Binghamton, talking to Dean Smith, getting that uh, 
coaching and that mentorship from one of the all-time greats? Well, Eddie, once once uh, I saw that the Jordan thing was coming out, you know, I, I just started going back and thinking about younger days and just see if I could fit back into this McDonald's All-American jersey, and I, I think I'm doing okay. But then I told my guys on our Zoom call today that Mammoth Man might show up at some point, and uh, seems like Mammoth Man is taking over the interview. How you doing, Eddie? I'm doing a lot better now. I thought I had the best hair in the interview, but I am. Sick hey, of- man, we're not going to sit here and just get all serious for the whole thing. I'm just trying to be like my guys. Every time I see them on Zoom, they got different hairdos, so I'm trying to be like them. I'm trying to be a better coach so I can get to know my guys better, so... I'm trying to uh, act like them. Malik always has a new haircut. Every other day, Jarvis is one of those guys, even Ray. So I, I want to make them feel at home if they're, if they're watching. Well, Coach, if it's cool, let's dive into some basketball. We've got our viewers that are checking in right now. They want to know about the program. I think it's fitting you get to answer these questions with the extravagant head of hair that you do have. So let's get into our first question. And it comes from Mark Hutchison, who – uh, is very active in social media, big fan of the Monmouth program, and, and wants to know, uh, with a couple of starters from last year that won't be here, with Ray Salnave into the portal and Mustafa Treor graduating uh, early on, but how different will next year's team look with talented players like Donovan Totley, who sat out, Jarvis, who bring back a ton of great players from this past year? Some guys going to fill some shoes for some guys who are vacating. So let's take that early look at next year's program. Well, Eddie, I think I think first off, um, we're excited about the young men that are going to be in the uniforms um, next season. But the guys this year that started, stopped started, were were hopeful. I, I talked to them a couple times a week. Stop is is really fighting to graduate. Okay, he's down to his last couple of hours, and he needs to finish strongly. And he'll be a college graduate, and that is a blessing. Um, his brother already graduated from college. Now Staff will be a graduate, and I think his sister is one class behind him. So he's adding to the legacy of his family. Um, with Ray, uh, I think I talked to Ray's family about this in December and January. Um, and this is another time when a, a young man, Ray, is going to graduate here. He's going to graduate. Ray and I talked today for probably about 30 minutes. And he informed me what he was going to do, but it was not a surprise because we've been talking about this and um, we're happy for him. Uh, I, I, I think he's leaving the door open because he's not sure, you know, what's going to happen. And I told him we'll leave the door open for him because he is a mammoth man. Um, you know, last year, Nick went to St. John's the year before that Michael went to the pros. Um, Micah's, the only one that hasn't finished out his, his schoolwork so far, but Nick was a graduate. We're raised a graduate. Staff will be a graduate. We're happy for those guys moving forward. The guys in the program are big time players. Um, we have a lot of guys back. Chop started a lot of games for most of the games. Dion has started pretty much every game since he's been here. Um, I know Nikkei got an injury, but uh, Nikkei, they're telling me, has a chance to be back in Jan- December or January. Um, Jarvis sat out this year. We're looking for big things from him. Gob Gabriel showed you a lot of flashes earlier. Uh, I mean, late in the year. Um, he's going to be tremendous next year. Um, our freshmen will will add some things to what, what we'll be losing from the seniors. Um, and, and like I said, Ray and I are in constant communication, and we're going to wish him well and, and hope he finds something that that will make him and his family very happy. And if it doesn't go that way. He and I will have some conversations about other things. And I think when you think about last year, it, it does. And again, we mentioned the way the season ended and being so abrupt. And we have more questions coming in. But, Coach, you mentioned uh, some of the great seasons that the, the players in the program had last year. And, and you really got the feeling over the course of that year that the team – was ready to make that run. And I think we're all fans, broadcasters, everyone alike uh, would have loved to see things play out in Atlantic city. Obviously things were, were different, but, but I know you loved the the team and the way they were playing and the way they were getting along at the end of the season. When we went down to the MAC tournament, in Atlantic city. 
Well, Eddie, um, you know, all through the year you have ups and downs. And I think a lot of people, when we, when we had our tough night at, at Kansas, you know, I, I think people kind of stopped paying attention to us. And then we showed resiliency after that. And guys really played good ball. And we were starting to play our best ball towards the end. And then Sienna came in here and knocked us off. Um, but we were going to take that and, and use it as motivation to have a chance to play some more basketball. Um, it's unfortunate that we didn't get to do it on the court. It's also, I think, it's unfortunate that the league would name a champion um, be, without playing the games on the court. Uh, hopefully I don't get in trouble for that, but I, I think you, it's safe to say you were the regular season champs. Um, if we win that game against Sienna at the end, then they would have been co-champs. Okay, and Shaheen's team would have went to the tournament. So then it, it just, it was so close, kind of surprising that uh, we were going to name a tournament champion without playing the tournament games. But uh, that's how the league wanted to do it this year. And, and we'll, we'll get ready to, to battle for the regular season championship next year and then really put ourselves in position to, to win the tournament. We will have a commercial break in just a second, but there is another question for coach and why stop the momentum right now and Kathleen wants to weigh in and Kathleen we appreciate you watching our first edition of Hawk Talk and coach this is coming directly from our chat uh, it addresses the newest coach in the league and exactly how things will be now in New Rochelle up at Iona with coach Rick Patino and get your thoughts on that move I know you know coach Patino very well and just how things with that Hiring, how, how uh, give us your take on what's going on with the Iona Gales and the newest coach in the Macbeth Patino. Well, Eddie, um, thank you. Ever say thank you for the question. I think it's tremendous for the Mac. Um, I think Coach Patino is one of the best in the game. Um, he recruited me when I was a young guy and almost had me ready to go to Providence. Um, I've watched his career. I'm, I'm friends with Coach Massiello. Uh, so when he was at Louisville, I went and watched his practices. He's, he is a basketball coach. That's what Coach Patino is. If you ever see him on the road, he'll help you be a better coach. He'll talk to you about things that maybe you should do as a young coach. Um, he's usually a trendsetter. Wherever he goes, however he does it, other coaches follow. Um, when he was at Providence, he played one way. Then he went to the pros. Then he came back to Kentucky and he started pressing full court all over the place and getting nine and 10 all Americans to come to one school. He was first to do that before one and done was even a thing. Then he went back to the pros and then he came back to college again at Louisville and played a totally different way than he did at Kentucky and Providence and won another national championship. So when it comes to basketball, coach Patino is one of the best in the world. Now, with that being said, Okay, with that being said, Iona has won the last four championships. So even though Coach Patino is as great as he is and what he's going to do, he's going to lift the energy of the whole league. But it's hard to do better than what Tim Clues did while he was there. Okay, especially the last four years. Um, he's won the championship four years in a row. So the best someone can do is win it five times in a row. So before we we hang some more banners over there, let's 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 be respectable because Coach Patino is a Hall of Famer, um, and he's going to be great for our league. He's been on a Zoom call with us already, the head coaches of the league, and his energy is incredible. Um, he's already making all of us a better coach because you better be ready with your plan if you're playing Coach Patino's team. Um, you better make sure you have, you know what you're doing or it will be a long night. It could still be a long night, even if you know what you're doing. But I think it's a, it's tremendous for Mac, the Mac League, um, the brand, the whole thing. And I think it's going to raise all of our levels of coaching, playing and all of that. So before we take that first time out question coming in from Carrie and Carrie, we'll get to your question after our first time out here on Hawk Talk, Coach, have to follow up with that last answer. And I know you and I spoke late in the year. It was on an ESPN broadcast, and I got to talk to you after the game. It was a mammoth win. And the opponent wasn't Iona, but you brought it 
to Tim Kloos. And now that he has transitioned out of coaching, I know uh, his health was on the forefront of all of our minds. And uh, that night, you really, uh, I had to kind of catch myself because your message to him through the ESPN cameras was a strong one. I know uh, that that is something that you're very adamant about, is that fraternity of coaches and the well-being of all of you. Well, Eddie, I, you know, what's funny is Coach Clues and I have, have battled. We, we've recruited against each other. We, we've gotten arguments on the court. Um, we've, I think we've, we've closed the gap to where they were and all those types of things. And, and we didn't talk a lot off the court. But this year, he and I, I could, I could say we became friends. Um, I've reached out to him. I invited him to come down when all this craziness is over, just to talk ball or come down to the beach, because um, I want him to be healthy. Tom, Tim Clues is an incredible coach, and it was fun competing against him. And the day that the tournament got canceled, I had called him the night before and just said, hey, man, what do you think? you think we should be playing? Hey, if you get a minute, call me back. And he called back, and after they said we weren't playing and said how he, he felt bad because he thought my team really had a chance. Um, and he's left me some, some incredible messages throughout this year, just complimenting me as a coach, as a man, um, the, the way our program has done. Uh, he, he just said a lot of nice things throughout the year that – he didn't have to say. So he's in on that coaching community and we all pull for each other. And, uh, you know, I think um, I'm still pulling for him. They haven't talked a lot about what's going on, but we stay in touch on the phone. Thanks for asking. More questions for head coach King Rice coming up. We invite you to continue getting those questions in. We're talking basketball and it's the best thing we can do right now. This is our first edition of Hawk Talk with Mammoth Head Basketball Coach King Rice. We'll take a brief timeout. We'll come right back. We have a question from Carrie in the queue ready to go. Get your questions in for the head coach of the Mammoth Hawks men's basketball program, King Rice, as we'll be back after this brief timeout here on Hawk Talk.
Welcome back to the first edition of Hawk Talk here as we continue on with the head men's basketball coach at Monmouth University, King Rice. And, and coach, we've got questions coming in, but I think the, the biggest thing that I think we need to address first, we're all working from home. You can see we're a bit more casual than normal, but you, you can't let certain things fall off from your normal routine. And I think you know what I'm talking about a little bit. Yes, I do, Eddie. Hey, kids out there. If you don't brush your teeth, they will look like this. Make sure you brush your teeth. The, I'm incredibly impressed by the ability. You you could tell you played football at a high level because to talk, it's like having a mouthpiece to talk like that. Were you, that was like, as, as the captain, you could do that, talk with the mouthpiece? Um, Eddie, that was really hard. I think I might have cut my gum. I'm probably bleeding now, so I'm going to take those out. But, kids, make sure you brush your teeth all the time. Make sure you brush your teeth. We've got our next question coming in, and it comes from a Mammoth alum and a former baseball player at Mammoth, Kerry Jacobson, checking in. It follows all of the Hawks programs. It really follows this basketball program from his home in Las Vegas. And, Coach Kerry wants to know, for those who haven't seen Donovan Totley play, what is his style of individual play? What's he going to bring to the team when he's able to suit up in a Mammoth uniform? Um, Donovan is, is very explosive. Um, he scores the ball at a high level. He scores at all three levels. He can get to the rim and score. He got nice. He's so fast with the ball. He can get the spots on the floor. Um, he shoots the three ball at a high clip. Um, and, and he's just a competitive guy. Donovan's a kid that, you know, he's, he's short, shorter person and he's, he's got a big chip on his shoulder about that playing basketball. He wants to prove he's the best player on the floor all the time. I think the things that, that we, uh, want him to do is get in great, great shape so he can do it all the time on both ends of the floor. Um, just because of the size, people are going to try to compare him to, to J-Rob. He's totally different than Justin, um, but he's explosive where he can score the ball like that. He's going to make some exciting, exciting plays. But I, I just don't want people to do that to him, to start comparing him to J-Rob just because of their size. But I'm sure, you know, he's going to do some things to remind people of, of that young fellow we had here a couple years ago. More questions coming in for head coach King Rice. And before we get to them, one of the points, coach, that you make to me in our conversations, be it on radio or, or on our ESPN broadcasts, when players transition from one year to the next, you could have a player who played a role for you one season, let's say as a sophomore. Then as a junior, they play in a different role, even though they're the same player. And I think the point you brought up about Donovan – not only applies there, but applies to all of the returners for next year. And that's something that uh, I really learned that talking to you about that. We as fans, as broadcasters, oh, we know what we're getting when we see a player. It's really not the case when these young men grow and mature in their time of college. Well, I, I think, Eddie, um, you mentioned his name just a minute ago talking about my hair, George Pappas. Um, George grew up right before our eyes. You know, he came in as this guy that we were thinking about red shirting, had a solid freshman year. And then sophomore year, he, he didn't play his best basketball. Okay. But the thing he, he, that happened was he lost his confidence. Some. He had worked his whole life to achieve this thing of being a division one basketball player. And then when it wasn't going how he wanted, he lost his confidence, which happens to a lot of kids. And I was telling everybody, he's still one of the best shooters I've ever seen and played with some really good guys. But he, uh, George is a baller. And then this year, the year that he had for us was incredible. And now he's going to be a senior next year, and he'll make that same jump that he made this year. I think because he's had a lot of success, Dion made a big jump this year, okay, because of the work he's put in. Chop had a big jump this year. I think a lot of people were expecting big jumps from Ray, but Ray had a much better junior year than he had the year before, just who he was as a young man. So everybody grows up. Some of them grow up at different times. And we got a nice group of guys that fit together really well. Um, we haven't even talked about Marcus and Malik, um, the roles that those guys played, that, you know, and 
both of them could be starters in most programs in our league. And they are in our program ready to have breakout years. So we, we have a lot of guys that can do things. Um, and then, like I said, our freshmen, they'll be able to add something right away. Jarvis was on the verge of doing some great things this year. And then we had to slow him down because of his leg. But he'll, he should be back 100%. And when we get everybody back rolling, we got a chance to be one of the best teams in this league. And that's what we try to do every year. So you mentioned a lot of the names that fans are familiar with, and there's maybe a few names that they're not familiar with. And there are a couple of players who will be joining the program and, and just will let you uh, have have the floor briefly to, to mention Jack Holmstrom and Miles Foster as the two guys at this point in time that will be joining that talented group of returners that you just detailed. Well, Jack Holmstrom, I go back with him. I knew his parents before he was born. I recruited Jack's father to Illinois State, Ben Holmstrom, and he was dating his girlfriend at the time. That's Jack's mom's mom now. Um, I'm close with Ben's parents um, because I recruited him so hard. So when we had this opportunity, um, I thought it was great that I have a chance to recruit Jack. But Jack is a, a young man. He's coming in. He's going to honor school. So our competition for Jack was the Ivy League schools, okay? And we might not have won if I wasn't as close to the family because Harvard wanted him. He, he's a different level student. He's going to come in almost half of his college classes are he's already taken. Okay, this young man is is just different when it comes to that. And we might not have won if if I didn't know his parents so so well. And so we're excited for him to join our program. Um just because what it means to me with his mom and dad that they would trust me after I had a part in his parents' life. Um so that's really cool. And on the floor, he's a tireless worker that can really, really shoot the ball that really knows how to play, that will give every part of his self for the team. And I think he's going to fit in with our guys. Um, he and then when you talk about Miles, I think Miles is a kid that can do a lot of different things on the court. He could be your inside presence, but he could also shoot the ball. He can handle the ball. He can rebound. Um, you can hit him on the outside and have him play dribble weave with your guards, which would be very hard to guard when a big man would have to get out there and guard him. Um, he can take smaller guys inside. He can take bigger guys away from the, the basket. He can shoot the ball to the three. Um, and he's continuing to get better right now. So we think big things are Miles. Um, and they're both great young men from great families. Miles' mother did a tremendous job raising him. We're fortunate to get him because he also had Patriot League and Ivy League schools that we were fortunate to get him. Jamal Meeks did a tremendous job recruiting him the whole year. Um, I think that Gob and Jake were on our team, helped us in making sure Miles got here too. Excited to see what they're going to bring to the table next season. And the coaches continue, or the, excuse me, the questions continue to come in for Coach Rice here on Hawk Talk. Remember, if you want to get your question submitted to Mammoth head coach, King Rice, you just throw it in the chat. We'll make sure that it gets over to me. And if you miss this live edition of the show, it will be archived on mammothhawks.com as well on the Mammoth University Athletics Facebook page. Question coming in from a friend of ours, John Wooding. And John wants to know, and he's been around college athletics his whole adult life. It coach John wants to know, as the head coach of the program, do you enjoy practice, the preseason leading up, to the season, or do you enjoy the in-game coaching aspect more? Hang on, Eddie. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. 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 Let me take those out. Um. Actually, I I probably the part I like the most is is when you get your team at the beginning and you see all the opportunity. There's just how many kids you have and how hard they worked and to see if you can put it together. Uh, so everybody can play at a high level. You know, I try to get it where each one of my kids have their best year every time, every year. Sometimes we get close, sometimes we fail. Um, and that's probably not fair to, to, to do because a lot of guys have, I just want every kid to play their best basketball all the time. 
And so I like the practice part of it. I like building the togetherness. I like how much time we have to spend together. Um, what's happened to me as, as we've gone along, game day is a bad day because the game doesn't get here fast enough. So you, you just have so many emotions and you go from, we're going to win by 20, we're going to lose. Maybe I didn't have them prepared. Maybe I over-prepared them. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? So I don't like the lead up to the game. But once the ref throws the ball up in the air, I st- I, I'm ready. And I, I love to compete. I love once the game starts. Probably the first, the, the four hours leading up to it, I don't like it that much. You're always excited when you wake up on game day, kind of like the players. But as a coach, as the day goes along, you just you get a little edgy. But once the ball gets thrown up in the air, it's competition. Um, and then you, you lean on the stuff that you know. You lean on your feel. Um, you take advice from your assistants. And you try to put the best effort out there every night. You mentioned you lean on what you know when the ball is tipped. And as we've mentioned already, you learned a lot from the dean of college basketball coaches in North Carolina's Dean Smith. And our next question comes from Greg Daly. And he wants to know, speaking of that Tar Heel tie, Coach, as of now, are the Hawks still on schedule to play the Tar Heels next season at home? Um, yes, we are. We're, we're playing the Heels, uh, uh, I think. I think it's like December 17th or something like that. I don't know if that part's been put out there yet, but yes, we are playing the heels. Um, Coach Williams is a, is a very close friend of mine. We've been talking uh, throughout the quarantine just about things, and he, he, I'm one of his kids. Coach Williams recruited me, so he still checks in, wanted to make sure my mom was doing okay. Um, but this, this is what the Carolina family is about. It's about trying to help each other. And he knew that this would really help our program. And anytime we ask home for stuff, they usually take care of it. So, yes, we are still on. But not just that. We're going to – We're. I'm pretty sure we, we got some big-time games, some, some really, really big-time games. And the most important part is through my nine years, we haven't had a lot of home games because it, once you build your team up, people don't want to come into your building. But I think as of right now, we got five or six home games in the preseason this year. And that's the most we've had. So I think people better get out there and get their tickets. We're going to have a, a really good team, but we have a very, very good home schedule. Um, Princeton's coming back, some people that we played in the past, but um, Carolina's on that schedule. And, and it's the most home games that we'll have had in the last 10 years. So we need all the Hawk fans to come on out, not just get single game tickets, but come on out and, and support this team. Get out there, get your tickets early so everybody knows that it's going to be a tough, tough place to play when we do get to play again. And I think you ended it perfectly. Once we're back to sports, I, I know, I think I speak for everyone. We're all excited to get rolling and whether it's watching games and playing them and broadcasting them. I, I think we're all eagerly anticipating that. Uh, we have our next question that comes in, and it is a basketball question. Brian from Ocean Coach wants to focus in on one of the ultimate glue guy, unsung heroes in the Mac, in my opinion, and it's Marcus McClary. And just touch on Marcus's development as a player so many times, playing that kind of heralded undersized four role that this program, I would dare say, is made famous when you go back to the Josh James and the Deion Jones and just Marcus's development as a student athlete, and you could see – He's really come into his own on both sides of the floor. Well, you know, you get these guys, and, and it's it's just crazy that Marcus is going into his senior year. He has been as steady as any person um, in our program since he's been here. Uh, he's grown up right before our eyes. He's a tireless worker. Um, he always does what he's supposed to do. And, you know, now he's a senior. You know, he's going to be going into his senior year, and I expect the same things. I expect he'll he'll still be that glue guy. He'll he'll guard one of the hardest guys. Um, he'll score. He'll he'll do all the little things that we ask people to do on a regular basis, and not complain at all. But I, I'll expect Marcus to he'll 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 score more points. I think this year just because he's been through it three times now, and and he'll know where to pick his spots. And because Marcus is a very good offensive player. Um, 
We, we're going to put him in spots where he can take advantage of people. He's a guy that we could probably post up some. Um, and he's a guy that can get away from the basket and do big things. So we're, we're looking for Marcus to continue to do great things, but to also, you know, have a senior year, which most guys play their best basketball their senior year. You heard Coach start to allude to some of the qualities he looks for in, in a student athlete. And our next question comes from Patty from Tom's River. We appreciate Patty watching our Hawk Talk here this evening. And Coach, Patty wants to know, what are the qualities that you and your staff look for in recruiting potential student athletes to Monmouth? Well, we, um, you know, there's, there's not just one type of thing we look for. Um, obviously, we, we wouldn't hear about you if you couldn't play basketball. Okay, so, you know, we, it's, a, it's always a fine line because you have to be able to play basketball first. You have to pique our interest that way. Um, but then we we won't just take you because you're a good basketball player. I think my years at Vanderbilt kind of set the tone for for how I would do things moving forward. And at Vanderbilt, you had to be very selective on who you could recruit because some kids could not get into school there. So that would eliminate a lot of kids. Well, we like to go out and and we like to watch. Um, there's all kinds of scouting services. We like to watch and see. You know, how, how hard you play, you have a good attitude, all those things come into play, but how good are you at basketball? How good are you? How athletic are you? Um, do you pay attention when the coach is talking? All those types of things. Are, are you one of the better players on your team? Um, what do you do well? Um, do you shoot the ball well? Are you a point guard that runs the team and guards everybody that they put in front of you? So it, it's really basketball things that, we'll look for when we go out and watch guys play. Um, we'll also, their scouting services, but we will get kids' names off of that, but then we go and watch ourselves. We don't go off of other people's rankings or anything like that. And then once that fits, then we have to make sure that you can come to school at Monmouth. You know, so we have to get your grades and make sure that your, your test scores and everything fit what Monmouth University stands for. And sometimes kids fit and sometimes kids don't quite fit. But that's what we have to do first. And then if you can fit in school, we check everything. We check how you treat your girlfriend. We check Twitter. We check Instagram. We check at your school. Do you treat everybody nice at the lunch in the lunchroom? We, we want nice young men that are really good basketball players that want to do school, um, that want to be something outside of a basketball player. Um, so I, I hope that answers your question. Um, but we, we won't just take a baller. If you're just a baller and you don't have all the other things, this won't be the place for you. Um, I, I respect Monmouth University so much. I think we're all fortunate that we get to represent this university. Um, and I, I try to talk to my parents about that. Uh, I'd say that in recruiting. And I'm very fortunate to be here. So if you're going to choose Monmouth, please want all these things. Want to be a great Samaritan. Want to be on campus and be outgoing and talk to people. We want kids like that because you will be a leader on our campus. Um, and, and we want kids that want those types of things. So hearing your answer to that question, I'm brought back to answers that you've given me when it comes to your experience, coach, how much of your own experience being recruited by all the schools you did and going where you went kind of shaped your philosophy now as a head coach? Because the answer you gave there, I've heard you say things like that before in your decision to attend North Carolina. Um, Eddie, I think when I uh, was going through it, we didn't, we didn't know a lot. Um, not a lot of people from, from our area had gotten recruited that way. So we leaned on our on my high school coach. Um, but Coach Smith did it a little bit differently. I, I was a highly ranked kid, so everybody came in saying, you're going to have the ball. You'll be the starting point guard. You'll lead our program to all these things. And Coach Smith came in, and he asked my mom and dad what was important to them. And my dad only wanted me to get an education. He really didn't care that much about sports. He wanted me to have a chance at life. And he knew if I 
went to college and got a degree that I would have a chance. So my dad went into this long academic, well, not long, but made his point very clear that he wanted me to get an education. And that's what my parents wanted for me. And just that Coach Smith would come in and ask what was most important to us showed us that he was different. Everybody else just assumed me getting the ball handed to me was going to be the most important thing. Well, my dad raised me that if somebody gives you something, there's something behind that. No one's just, nothing's free, King. So if this man's saying he's going to give you the ball, how can we trust that? He could have told somebody else that. Coach Smith came in and asked us what was important to us. And education was number one. And at Carolina, that was the thing. He showed us when he was in our home and throughout my years there that it was important to be well-rounded, that it was important to do all these things and not just be a basketball player. And I said from day one, in my eyes, this is the North Carolina program. We run it very similarly. And it's important to me that we choose the right young men to represent because it's not just representing our team. We're representing thousands of people that love Monmouth and love Monmouth University that came before us. So we have to make sure we bring the right young men to come down here and represent all of us. I give you an amazing amount of credit, Coach, for being able to deliver such a fantastic answer while fiddling with that mustache. See, this was this was the mustache that I was trying to grow in college that I thought was so important. And now that I, I, I have, I've grown it in the last couple of minutes, I'm probably going to shave it because that's not that good looking. Hey, George, what do you think about the mustache, brother? Look at that thing. It's just like yours, George. We've got questions coming in for the newly mustached King Rice. Uh, the mustache is gone. Questions coming in. We've got a couple in the queue. Coach, our next question uh, comes from a local fan. And Lynn, who is in Jackson, and Lynn, we appreciate you checking out our first Hawk Talk. Again, if you can't see it live, Make sure you spread the word. It'll be archived on mammothawks.com and also right here on our Mammoth Athletics Facebook page. Coach, the next question, as I mentioned, Lynn from Jackson uh, wants to know, we continue with the theme of family. You've mentioned at the beginning of our Hawk Talk tonight, you're with your family. Thankfully, everyone is safe and together. Your North Carolina family is indeed a family. But basketball does run in your family. And the question is in the family. Was there any thought? And was there conversation into the other Division I athlete in the household right now, Xander Rice, playing his ball at Mama? Are you, are you, you y'all don't, y'all want me to get in trouble in front of my whole family? No, because then I would have been the most miserable dude every single day. He would have been telling his mom, dad's being mean to me, dad's being mean to me. And then I would have had to come home and then Summer would have been mad at me. Julian would have been crying every day. How come you don't play Xander more? And I would have said, Xander, don't listen. And then, then his mom would have winked at me a couple times, and then Xander would have gotten the game. So, no, we weren't doing that. Um, all joking aside, this that was one of the hardest decisions um, for me as a dad. Um, as a dad, when you have a son that plays basketball like I do, you always want to be his coach. And I always thought I would be his coach. Um, but we had recruiting go through and, and we stayed out of it for most of it. We were parents. And I told him if he found something that he thought fit him, then we looked strongly at it. And uh, Bucknell was in there hard. And um, the, the thing about my son that, that is really cool is before he committed to them, we, we had gotten to the place that that's what he was going to do. But before he made that call, he sat in our living room and he said, Dad, are you sure that you're okay with this? And I was just so proud as a dad that my son had these opportunities that I was okay with it. But um, it was cool that he asked me because I think if I would have just said, hey, man, I need you to do this, he would have did that for me. And this is his journey. Um, I would have never done that to him no matter what. I would have loved to have been his coach. But the cool thing is going to be is we're scrimmaging Bucknell next year. And I already told him we're going to whoop him. I already told Nathan we're going to whoop him. Xander standing right here. Come here. Come here. So everybody can see that I'm saying it in your face that we're going to whoop Bucknell. And Eddie, check out his chain. That's a throwback from when his dad used to wear chains. Get in here. All right? That chain right there, that's a throwback <laughs> right there. 
But we're going to whoop Buck now. That's why I wanted to whoop my own son. That's why I didn't have him come to my house. I don't do a lot of talking. Now it sounds good right now. I'm going to whoop my own son. That's why I didn't have him come to my house. Well, it's great to see Xander, by the way. And I do love that chain coach. You know, I always, I'm always a fan. And <laughs> athletics always runs in your family. We do have a couple of questions in the queue. But before we get to some of our viewers, uh, when we came on our Hawk Talk tonight, you had the youngest member of the Rice household in the shot with you. Uh, the athleticism runs in the family, right? We know Summer was a tremendous athlete. We know you were a tremendous athlete. Xander is playing D1 basketball at Bucknell, but I can't go out on campus and not see Julian running with the football. Whoever's near him is going to throw him a pass. I've seen President Leahy do it. I threw it, but it wasn't a good pass. And uh, is Julian's passion maybe the pigskin a little bit? You know what? That That's what's crazy because parents always um, say we let our kids pick. We let our kids pick. And Julian likes football more, <laughs> okay? And I told Sammy D, our football coach, Sam Dorsett, really is – is one of the reasons why he likes football so much. But then Jamal Meek's son, Zach, plays football, and he's a good good boy that has really – Julian took a liking to, and, and Zach is a stud 14-year-old football player. So I think football is Julian's first love, but he's only eight, and I've been taking him out every day, working him out. So I think basketball has closed it, closed the gap. Um, and I'm a basketball coach, so I still got 10 years before he goes to college to switch him, okay? But it's going to be a hard one because Coach Dorsett keeps taking him in the backyard, teaching him stuff that he was teaching PD and all those great running backs that we had. And Julian got good hands, and he got a little swag to him, so we're going to have to fight him to keep that football out of his system. A few more questions coming in for Mammoth Head Basketball Coach King Rice here on our Hawk Talk. And Coach, our next question is a scheduling question, but not necessarily for your program alone. It's a New Jersey question, and Thomas is checking in. And Thomas has a pretty interesting question, and I think you're gearing up to answer this one. He wants to get your thoughts on a New Jersey school round-robin kind of non-conference schedule or league schedule next year, especially with – the potential restrictions that could be in front of everyone. So your thoughts on all the Jersey schools playing each other? Uh, uh, I don't know about that one. Hmm. Uh, you know what? I think that, that sounds great on paper, okay? But for next year, I, I know it couldn't happen next year unless the NCAA makes some changes to how we can schedule. Um, they might let you play a game or something like that, that you can donate money to charity. Um, but that will have to be a, a special thing. Um, there's so much great basketball in the state of New Jersey that you would love to have all the schools play each other. But it's usually, it has to come from the top down. Um, I'm friends with Kevin. We even talked about playing next year. Still small chance. Um, and I'm, I'm friends with Coach Pico up there, and both of them are, are unbelievable coaches that, that have made all, all New, ba New Jersey basketball proud. But they're the ones that set the schedules for the rest of us. Um, we would be excited. I'm sure Kevin Bagger would. I'm sure Sha would just from our own league because – when you get a chance to play Seton Hall or Rutgers, especially as good as their teams are right now, it's great for all of our programs. But you have to look how great is it for their program. And they already play each other, okay? And now it's getting harder and harder and harder to get into the NCAA tournament. Those guys have to really pay attention to who they schedule, how they schedule. If somebody's having a down year and you schedule them, then that might be the game that keeps them out of the tournament. If you're playing a mid-major, you know, and they got a bunch of seniors and they beat you in your place, that might keep you out of the tournament. So you, it, it's a really hard thing to get everybody to be able to do it. Um, I think it would be great for New Jersey basketball, especially with Princeton over there too and NJIT, NJIT what they've been doing the last few years. There's just so much great basketball, but, we're, you know, you have to make sure you don't, hurt the high majors 
by doing it. Because if it's going to hurt them, then that brings the basketball level down on for all of us. So when they're doing great, maybe, and a couple other schools are doing great, maybe they'd be willing to do something like that. Or if they needed a win, maybe they'd want to pick a school that was struggling. But it definitely has to come from the top down. It's kind of fitting that at this point in our conversation with head coach King Rice, this question's come up and it's, it's a pretty good one coach and it's going to make you think a little bit. And Pete who uh, has chimed in earlier would like to know. And again, it's a great question. Um, what so far coach Rice has been your favorite moment as a mom at Hawk to this point, you have the option. Is it an on court or off court moment? But to this point in your coaching career at Mammoth now nine years in, Coach, what's been your best moment? Um, I, I, that's an easy one for me. It's it's uh, that all these guys have graduated. Um, you know, year in and year out, that's the goal is for guys, young men to come into your program and grow up and, and have an opportunity to have a better life uh, when they get out of here. And it's not just our program, it's the whole Mammoth team. It's everybody on this campus that is, enabled the basketball program to, to graduate the guys that they bring in. And that's, that's what makes me most proud. That's why I, I take it so seriously because after these four years, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know how many years after I got out of Carolina, I would get to go, but now it's been, I'm 51. Now it's been a lot of years and you just try to provide that for, for young people. And when they graduate, so many doors open up for them. Doors that they couldn't even imagine. That they, right now, they think, ah, uh, coach, you don't know what you're talking about. Those doors will be open for them because it's going to say at the top of their diploma, Monmouth University. And this school is doing tremendous things. And it's, I mean, it's different than when I first got here. Just just nine years ago, there's just a, the progress that our school has made that, you know, just when you walk around our campus, it, just everything that's been happening over these last 10 years, and our new president's going to take us to a whole nother level. So it, it, we're just, I think we're all fortunate to be a part of this. And I'm most proud that all but one of my guys have graduated. And that one has told me here recently that he's going to do it too. Oh, coach, that is, that's, that is very cool. And uh, speaking of uh, this, which is potentially one of our final questions is a pretty cool one as well. And it comes from a former coworker of ours and a friend of ours. And Susie, who's out in Los Angeles right now, Susie Milano is checking in. Uh, her new place of employment has a role in this next question, Coach. She wants to know, when's Mammoth headed back out to L.A. to play the Bruins? See, there's a chance now. There, there is a chance that we would get to do that again. And I bet you if we ever get to do it again, more people from UCLA come and watch. <laughs> but um, Susie, I, I know you're loving it out there. I, I, I've seen some of your pictures and stuff, but Mick Cronin is a very, very close friend of mine. Okay, and Mick is one of the, the best coaches in the country, but we're really good friends. We go all the way back to when I worked at Illinois State and Mick was a, a high school coach and he, um, we recruited one of his guys from his school and he really, really helped me. And we've been friends ever since that. Now he's gotten into college and, and became one of the best coaches in, in college basketball on and off the court um, and who he is as a man. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that I call him a friend. So we'll, we'll, I'll bring that up to Mick sometime, but you got to make sure your team is ready for that too. Um, because we did win the last time we were in that building and everywhere we go, somebody says something about that. So if you get the chance to play them again, you better be ready <laughs> because uh, they feel like they owe us one. Well, coach, I know I speak for everyone watching and all of us behind the scenes here. This was our first Hawk talk. It's going to be pretty hard to top. And we do want to thank you for giving us some time, obviously inviting us into your home through this call. And we want to thank all the viewers for checking this edition of Hawk Talk out. And this was fun having you take us through not only your experiences as a student athlete at UNC, but at Monmouth as well. And we had a little bit of fun, which I know you, it's always important to you as well. So coach, thank you so much for being our first guest on Hawk Talk. Yo, Eddie, you know, it's all good. It's all good. You know how we do back uh, 91, 
February. I scooped this young lady up. Just to say, hey girl, come here for a minute. I scooped her up. We've been chilling ever since. She even likes when my hair grows crazy. But uh, to everybody out there, we hope you're staying safe. Um, we love the Monmouth community. President Leahy, Dr. McNeil, you're doing a tremendous job. Um, all the Monmouth fans, stay safe out there. Please, please wash your hands. Follow all the stuff. Put your mask on, whatever you got to do. But please stay safe. We need these kids back on campus, but they can't come back until, until this slows down some. We're following the, the leadership from our governor. Seems to be doing a tremendous job. But everybody, please stay safe. We're going to keep staying safe and have some fun. And we'll be ready. The Mom and the Hawks basketball team will be ready when the students get back. Well, Coach, thank you so much again for inviting us inside of the Rice household. That was our first guest here on Hawk Talk and the Mammoth head men's basketball coach, King Rice. Again, if you missed this episode, you can see it archived on mammothhawks.com. You'll also be able to see it on our Athletics Facebook page. And we want to remind you that coming up this Thursday, we have our second installment of Hawk Talk, and it comes from the reigning MAC champion women's soccer program. And our head coach, Chrissy Turner, will be our next guest on Hawk Talk. That's this Thursday at 7 p.m. Again, for Coach Rice, I'm Eddie Acapinti, and thank you for checking out our first edition of Hawk Talk.